Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here and welcome to today's On Shape tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at this challenge, 0705B, the lid. And this is a challenge that I've posted on my YouTube channel, the Too Tall Toby YouTube channel. And I had several comments from people asking if we could do a tutorial on this one. So no problem. Let's get into it. I'll include a link down below to this challenge video in case you want to give it a try yourself before we get into this tutorial. But as always, these challenge videos include a timer. So let me hit play here so we can get this timer going. And let's take a look at this challenge. You know, one thing that I always encourage my students to do is before you get started creating a 3D model, take a look at the 2D print or the napkin sketch and come up with a basic game plan of how you're going to approach this thing. And I think that in a model like this, it's uh, probably going to be some type of a revolve. You can see we've got kind of a dome shape here. We've got uh, this angled shape going up here. I think this is going to end up being a revolve. In fact, it even tells us here on the front view that we're going to be doing a revolve. So I think that my first sketch is going to look something like this, a line that comes over, an arc that comes up like this, and we'll take that first shape and we will revolve it about a center line. Then I think we can jump over here to the right plane and create this cut here, this 110 degree angle cut on the right plane, and then we can mirror that across so that we've got that cut in both locations. And I think that once we get that geometry in place, we can get in here and start focusing on this geometry. I think this will be a sketch that we create here on this kind of outer lipped surface. We'll create a sketch of a tombstone shape and we'll cut extrude that up. And then we can create a sketch of this hole and we can cut extrude that down. And then we can finish off by creating a pattern in eight places of both of those features. So I know it took us a minute and 15 seconds to get through that game plan, but I think it's always good to come up with a game plan. And if you agree, then just take a moment and hit the like button on this video and we will get into this challenge. So I'm gonna move this model here, this drawing over onto my second screen and I'm gonna to choose to create a new document here. I'll call this 0705B-LID. This is being created as a public document. So if you ever are working in Onshape and wanna search the public space, you can find this document and you can see how I created this thing. This model is utilizing inches and pounds. So I'm gonna start out by going into my document uh, workspace units and I'm gonna change this to inches. I'm gonna change this down here to pounds and that should set us up for success. And like I said in the game plan, I'm gonna start out by creating a sketch to be revolved. So this is gonna be a line that comes over, looks like 12 inches over two. So in on shape, we can just type 12 slash two. That gives us that first uh, uh, line. We're gonna take the second line up here to a distance of 0 0.3. We'll create a line that just kind of comes in here a little bit. Uh, not sure exactly what that lip dimension is supposed to be. We'll create a vertical line here that comes up to a height of uh, this is 2.25 plus 0 0.3. It's actually 2.25 from that, uh, that lip that we created here at 0 0.3. And then we can finish up by creating a three-point arc here. We'll create a three-point arc that goes from this point to this point. And that arc is going to have a radius of... Uh, it's just a domed face. So uh, what that means is that the radius doesn't need to be called out, at least not at that location. But this point here needs to be vertical to or coincident to this line. So we'll make those vertical with the letter V. And then it looks like there is a radius or a diameter being called out to this point. So on the print, that's called out as a diameter of 11.5. So we'll do 11.5 slash 2. And there we go. A nice fully defined sketch here on the right plane. And I think we're ready to take this geometry and turn it into a revolve. So we'll jump into the revolve command here. We'll say that we're going to revolve about this axis. I love the way Onshape gives us that preview. And I think that looks great for our first feature. We'll call this feature here shift N. We'll call this uh, dome revolve main shape makes it nice and easy for us to know what that feature is if we look at this model again in the future so now let's jump over to the right plane here and begin a sketch and we're going to create a sketch of a line that comes in like so we're going to come back touch the end point of that line come up with an arc we're going to create another line here at an angle with tangency and then we'll just close this thing off i know we don't really have to close off this sketch but it's just kind of a a habit that I have to make my sketches nice and clean. And so this sketch has some dimensions coming from the uh, that, that upper lip section to here. It looks like that's a dimension of 0 0.5. The radius here is a radius of 0 0.75, 0 0.75. The angle here for this section is 110 degrees. 
And then we've got a dimension that goes from this point to uh, really across to the, the corresponding point on the other side of 1.25 over 2. The challenge here is that the location of this point is really defined by this kind of dome shape. But the good news is that we can just show that earlier sketch and then create a reference to that dome shape. So we'll make those two coincident. And there we go. That gives us more or less a fully defined sketch. I know we still have this extra geometry kind of hanging out here in space, but more or less that gives us our fully defined sketch. So let's hide that sketch that we created for the original main shape. And let's take this new sketch and turn it into an extrude remove. This is going to go through all and it's going to be symmetric. And look at that. That's looking pretty good. That gives us that kind of almost like a handle uh, type of shape, something that you can grip onto and turn. And so let's now take that shape and mirror it. So we jump into the mirror command and we say this is going to be a feature mirror, not the entire part mirroring. And we're going to mirror this cut that we created, this uh, material remove, and that's going to mirror about the front plane. And I always love the way Onshape gives us that preview when we do mirrors and patterns. So there we go. That gives us that, uh, you know, that shape that, that we were trying to create, kind of that main shape of those cuts. And so now we're just down to the final steps of this model. And those final steps are going to be to create some of those extrudes. Let's do a quick, uh, a quick rename here. So shift N, we'll call this uh, handle side one. And then we will uh, rename this feature here. We'll call this, do this a shift down. We'll call that handle mirror. And there we go. That gives us that, uh, you know, maybe I would call it handle cut side one. Let's do a shift N there again call this thing handle cut side one and then we could call this one here handle mirror shift in i know this is kind of burning off some time but it's just a, a really good practice a really good habit to get into and and you know that's the whole point of these practice models challenges is to give you a chance to actually practice some some of these best practices so now let's begin a new sketch here on this face and we can get in and start creating that kind of tombstone shape i think what i'll do is i'll just come up with a line come back touch the end point come up and around Come down with another line, create a final line here, and I'll make that final line horizontal. Whoops, this is actually going to be vertical. Uh, that's interesting. I guess because of my sketch orientation here, that's going to be vertical, not horizontal. So uh, this line and the origin, I guess it's going to be the same thing. That's going to be horizontal, not vertical. And uh, now I am ready to create some dimensions here. So I guess it's just the way that that view ended up displaying um, a little bit... Uh, uh, counterintuitive to what we might expect to be vertical or horizontal so this is going to be a radius here of 0 0.4 and we are going to say that this point here is going to be at a distance from the origin looks like an 11 inch bolt circle so 11 over 2 for the location of that cut extrude and uh, now we can take that geometry and do a remove so this is going to be an extrude remove the rule all and yeah, that looks pretty close to what we're seeing on the drawing there. Let's create another extrude remove using just a circle here, right at the center of this arc. And that circle is going to have a diameter of 0 0.30. Oops, sketch could not be solved. Let's just take a look there and make sure that we got that diameter correct. Diameter's correct. What's this tangency relationship? That doesn't look right. Okay, let's delete that. So I just clicked on the, the problematic relationship and pressed delete. That got rid of that. And now we're ready to turn this into an extrude remove the rule all. And there we go. So now we could call this, um, this is almost like a bolt hole counter bore. I think that's, that's probably the best way to name this uh, bolt hole. I'll call it head clearance. Head clearance, and then this one is going to be for the actual bolt hole. So shift in, we'll call this one hole for bolt. And now we're ready to take those two features and perform a circular pattern. So we're going to go into this flyout menu here, linear pattern, circular pattern, curve pattern. This is going to be a circular pattern. And this is going to be utilizing the feature pattern, not the entire part. So the features that we're going to pattern are going to be this extrude, uh, the bolt hole head clearance, and this extrude. Right away, we're seeing that renaming those features really saves us a lot of uh, a lot of energy, a lot of confusion. So we're going to pattern it about here. The number of instances is four. Let's adjust that to eight. And there we go. That gives us our pattern. And overall, I think this part is looking pretty darn good. Let's assign our material here. So we do a right mouse button, edit, uh, sorry, assign material. And this is going to come from the Too Tall Toby materials library, custom materials library that I created a few weeks ago. I'll link to the video on how I did that in case you want to watch a little tutorial on that. 
and this is going to be utilizing the plain carbon steel material and now i can just click any face of the model and then click down here in the corner for mass properties and we see that we're coming up with a mass here of 29.58 or 29.6 pounds let's take a look at our video here let's pause the video I'm going to pause the video here at 9 minutes and 41 seconds, and I'm going to roll to the end of this video, and let's see if we got it right. And the correct answer is yes, 29.6 pounds. So I hope that you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope that that all made sense. But of course, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to tune back in for the next On Cheap tutorial.